Hey there and welcome back to this course on learning how to deploy dockerized applications to AWS Elastic Beanstalk. In this video, we will be writing a quick docker file to actually dockerize a React application that we saw in the last video. Now we know that this course is primarily focused on actually using the AWS resources to do our deployment. So this video would be pretty quick and we would just see how our docker file looks like. So back inside my core editor, I can see that I've created this new file called docker file inside my React app workspace and it's a very small file which looks like this. So going over all these commands in a brief detail, um, on line one, we say that we will be creating a new application inside a docker container, a new service called react app and it should have a Node.js runtime available and we're using the long term stable version of Node. And in reality, all these packages or images are fetched from Docker Hub official Node packages. And we see that we have this long term stable tag available. So um, in this case, this is the image name and this is the tag. Um, moving on to the next step, we create a new work directory inside the Docker container called app, which is located inside USR SRC, a pretty common location for placing our applications inside a Docker container. Um, then we co copy everything from package JSON in, in, into the Docker container. Then we run npm install to install all dependencies. Finally, we copy over everything else. So that's this remaining code. And we expose port 3000. Now, why we need to expose a port just quickly? The short answer would be we can't just access anything inside the Docker container without exposing the port. So we say that anything that's running on port 3000 inside the Docker container should be exposed to the outside world. And finally, we give the run command npm run start. Now a quick gotcha of Docker files of why we copy packet.json first and copy everything else later. Um, the answer there would be each step inside a Docker file is cached. So anytime we change anything inside our code and rebuild our Docker file, if we uh, have already cached and installed our packages, we would start building the Docker file from this step. So we won't install the package every single time we build our application and this would mean that the builds are much faster and a lot and a lot less irritating if we were to copy everything in the first place then what would happen is each time we make any change inside the code and build this build this file the npm packages would still be installed every single time and that's not what we want so we'll be using this uh, common notation and this is the common docker gotcha just in case you didn't know to, to build this I would just uh, in my terminal run docker build dot now I already just built this uh, a while ago so everything you see will be used built using cache so this, this should happen quick pretty quickly and at the end of this we should get a docker image id which we can actually use to run a React application. There we go. This is the image ID. To run this, we can say docker run. Then we can do a port mapping and say anything inside the container port 3000 should also be accessed from my computer on port 3000. And finally, give the image ID and run this. This would bring up the docker container and start the React server and everything should work just as before. So back in my Chrome, if I go back to my application and refresh it, I see that it's working just like before. But um, a very important thing that we missed here is uh, the feature of React called hot reloading. So if I were to add a couple more exclamation marks here, save it and go back and refresh, we see that those are not being reflected in real time. Now we can fix this using something called docker volumes and we will be using docker compose to set up docker volumes in the next video.